Kevin, our journey starts now. Like most of the world, I have been playing way too much Legends of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom lately. No, no, like seriously, way too much. I haven't seen the sun in two weeks. One of the joys of this game is that it allows its players so much freedom and allows them, nay, encourages them to make their dumbest ideas a reality. And today, I have a very dumb idea. Richard, hit that intro. Koroks, the adorable little plant people hiding all over Hyrule that the internet just loves to crucify. Like, quite literally, full-on Jesus Christ crucify them. What the hell is up with that? Normally, the goal with these guys is to carry them to their friend a short distance away, usually requiring you to build some sort of contraption. They're fun little puzzles, but let's be honest, they're not exactly difficult. I mean, taking a Korok from the bottom of a river to the top, pff, anyone can do that. So today, I'm not carrying a Korok to his friend. This is the story of how I carried a Korok across all of Hyrule. All right, everyone, today we're leaving the chalkboard behind and we are here, we are in Hyrule and I've got a challenge for you today. You might be able to uh, hear this little Korok here, uh, uh, Kevin, this guy. Uh, yeah, he thinks his friend got separated. His pal sending up that smokestack over there and uh, here's the thing, Kevin thinks that he wants to go see his buddy over there. That's what Kevin thinks he wants that, but uh, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. That guy up there, that guy, he's like, do you remember that that one uh, guy from uh, Ocarina of Time who would like, he did the, that guy, the guy who does this thing? Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's that guy's descendant back there. We don't like him. That, uh, I don't remember his name. Steven, we don't like Steven up in here. So, you know, I, I could bring uh, our boy Kevin up to see his friend over there, but, that's not what I'm here to do. See, I'm not one of those people on Twitter who goes around, you know, freaking torturing these Koroks, going all punches pilot on them. No, 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 no. I'm going to treat Kevin to something he's never seen before. I mean, he sees, he's here. He's stuck in the middle of this desert. We're going to take Kevin to see the ocean. I mean, he does literally have, <laughs> have some water right here, but it, we're, it, we're just going to ignore that. Look. Nothing but desert. And he's gonna see the sea today! So the goal is to carry this Korok right here. We are going to carry him across the entire map into the ocean. Now you might be thinking, okay, that, that's not too bad. Clearly we can just carry him right over there across the map into the sea right there. No! If I was a chump, maybe that would be my plan. But I am no chump. No, no, no. That is too easy across the map technically by definition yes but we're gonna carry him all the way across the map across the whole diagonal even longer into this little ocean right here across all of Hyrule we will carry Kevin and we will help him achieve his dream that he does I mean he he literally just wants to go like right up there but no no the reason I chose this Korok in particular is because it's the one closest to the southwest corner of the map. Unfortunately, there aren't any that you can pick up in the desert proper. So, with that goal in mind, it was time to establish a game plan. Obviously, carrying a Korok by hand all the way across the map would take way too long. So, I'm going to be making the most out of my master hand and building Kevin and myself some sweet vehicles. After consulting the map, I came up with a route split into three distinct legs. First, I'll build a glider contraption to fly us up and over these cliffs and out of the desert. Then, we'll land here, build a boat, and sail up this river to around here, where I'll build some sort of car to take us to the shores of Akala. There, I'll build another boat and send Kevin off into the horizon. Also, you might notice 
Uh, I have not played very much of this game, so I, like I haven't filled in the whole map. These little uh, these little regional phenomena, I haven't done a single one. I've just been running around doing random stuff. Uh, so <laughs> we're gonna get to a point where like we're literally into uncharted territory. And so armed with nothing but a plan and a dream and a mutual hatred for Steven over there, Kevin and I began our epic journey to reach the ocean. A lot of people like to mess with the Koroks, torture them, crucify them, but mark my words, Kevin will not be crucified on this day. No, Kevin will see the sea. All right, so my original first thought was to maybe uh, build like a little ramp or something and then kind of get one of those gliders and, you know, go off the ramp and fly on out like that bird up there is. But then I remembered that I have a bunch of these, so uh, instead... Instead, I thought maybe we'd uh, build a little something like this. I have absolutely zero idea if this is going to work. This might <laughs> just send us careening off. Oh, there's a dragon up there. This might send us just smashing into a wall or something. But if it does work, it'll be pretty freaking hype. So I think I'm going to just kind of uh, tuck Kevin up in there. Yep, yeah, you uh, hang out there, buddy. All right, all right, all right. So, theoretically, when I grab onto this, uh, the rockets should shoot me straight up, and then when they disappear, the fans will kick in and we'll cruise on to where we need to go. I don't have that much, like, battery whatever stuff. Yeah, yeah, I got this yellow one. I don't remember how I got that. I think that's temporary. I only got one extra little pip for this whole journey, so this uh, might be very annoying. It might be great, but Kevin, take one last look at Steven over there because we're leaving that rotten bastard behind and we are taking off to see the ocean. Whew, Kevin, our journey starts now. Oh! Oh, yes! It worked! I hope I have enough juice to get over this thing. <laughs> Miraculously, this rocket UFO glider thing worked pretty much exactly as I envisioned, and Kevin and I were able to soar through the air and smoothly land at the first checkpoint. Oh, this might be <laughs> this might be a bit of a rough landing, Kevin. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, we don't want to. He's fine. He's oh, I'm not fine though. And so, that was the first leg of the journey complete. Filled with confidence, I began constructing a boat for the second leg. Little did I know, though, that my optimism would be short-lived. And that first leg would prove to be the easiest and the shortest by a long shot. All right, we got ourselves a nice little simple raft here. Now let's just uh, let's get Kevin on there. There you go, bud. Um, no, I didn't totally plan out how we're gonna get this thing into the water so I think oh my god uh, Kevin don't uh, do me a favor don't get struck by lightning we're just gonna drop you down there okay uh, didn't really work like I thought it's upside down okay that's not good um now this is a now this is a predicament is there land over there? If I just... Kevin, uh, don't drown. Where is this gonna take me? Alright, so maybe it didn't go exactly as I had planned, but after finagling my way onto a rock and flipping the boat back over, it was time that we begin leg two in earnest. See, we're fine. We're fine. Kevin's alright. Kevin's... You good, bud? The next, that was the first leg of the journey. No problem. Totally didn't uh, almost drown Kevin. Uh, next, the next leg, we're just going to sail up this river to about, to, well, to the, you know, the, the point of no return, the, into the unknown. Kevin, we ride. And leg two started off just as simple as the first. I came across a sailboat shortly after and decided to make a few upgrades, the idea being that when my fans ran out of power, I could use the wind to keep going while they recharged. 
Kevin, you're gonna have to, have to be a, a bit of an integral <laughs> part of the structure here. I don't know if this is faster, but when we run out of battery, which is gonna happen in a second here, um, okay, well, this, <laughs> this was unforeseen. Okay, so in hindsight, it may have been smart to do literally any sort of scouting for the route that I had planned out, because this little line on the map here that I didn't notice was actually a massive waterfall. But fear not, for I had a plan. If we could fly up and out of a canyon, surely we could fly out of this. All right, Kevin, once again, we fly. And the idea totally worked as intended. I didn't forget to put a glider on it and was able to soar through the air back to the island to reconstruct the boat and didn't have to restart from the beginning at all. <laughs> so, so that literally couldn't have gone worse. The boat is upside down. Ignore the fact that the weather's totally different and uh, we're gonna carry on. Clearly this waterfall was a bit of an issue, so I decided to call an audible on my plan and add in one more small leg. Okay, so I think this might work. The goal here is we're gonna drive a little bit down this road to this bridge here, uh, where we're gonna take off the wheels and then just put this top part in as the boat. We got Kevin on the front as the sort of figurehead of leading the charge. Uh, the fans are here just because we'll need them for the boat. We don't need them for the car. Now, if I had done the smart thing and grinded a bunch of Zonite before attempting this and had more battery, this would have been a great idea. But I don't think I can stress enough how little pre-planning went into this challenge, so I didn't do that and instead had to stop like every 20 seconds to recharge my freaking car. This, kids, is why you don't buy a Tesla. <laughs> and, and now we wait for other juice to come back. But after a brief stop to help this guy hold up his sign, I eventually made it to the bridge, removed the wheels, and gracefully lowered the boat into the water. And... Oh! It's facing the wrong way, but... And it's not... Well, it's kind of submerged in the water. That was the hard part taken care of, and now it would be, quite literally, smooth sailing for the rest of the leg. Except I didn't have a sail yet. Which is kind of crucial here. We got a little monster camp. Let's not mess around with that. Let's keep... <laughs> Don't tell me. Oh, Kevin! Oh my god. Now, was that just a coincidence? Or are the Zonai stuff metal? Because that could be a problem. To answer your question past me, no! Zonai parts are not metal. That means that the only possible explanation is that whatever god exists in Hyrule had an objection to my quest. They didn't want Kevin to reach the promised land. They wanted him to go back to that conniving, evil Steven. But if you thought the wrath of an angry god would be enough to stop me from bringing Kevin to the ocean, then you've got another thing coming. By this point, I was getting pretty good at this first section. I flew out of the canyon again, built a different duck boat using logs instead of platforms in hopes that it would float a bit better and maybe be a little bit faster, spoilers, it wasn't, and I made it back to the bridge in record time where, once again, God was making his presence known. All right. Okay, now that just struck right in the middle of the river. It's okay, this is, you know what, you know what, I think, uh, I think we're gonna hunker, we're gonna hunker down for a little, a little bit here. Now, I may be determined, stubborn even, but I'm not an idiot. If I went back out there in the storm, there was a good chance that I would get struck by lightning again and have to start all over. So instead, I built a tiny shelter, took Kevin inside, and waited. I took time to reflect a bit on our journey so far. See, despite my outward bravado, internally, I was having some doubts. These first two legs were supposed to be a breeze, fly over a cliff, sail down a river, and we're done. And yet already we had run into obstacle after obstacle. 
All I wanted to do was bring this little seedling to the sea, and yet it seemed that forces beyond my wildest imagination were working against us. If we struggled so much just to reach this place, could we possibly have the strength to defeat what lay ahead? Would I ever be able to bring Kevin all the way across Hyrule? But before I could linger on those doubts any longer, the skies cleared up and I knew what I had to do. Sitting here doubting wouldn't solve anything. The only way to answer my question was to get back on the boat, sail on, and find out for myself. All right, this should hopefully be the easiest leg. Of, I mean, the flying out of the thing is the easiest leg. Hopefully we run into no issues here. We just sail on down. And you know what? My first assumption was right after all. After the storm had passed, this leg was a breeze. Not long after I made a quick pit stop to upgrade my boat. Learning from my first poor sailboat attempt, I built this double sail monstrosity that absolutely flew down the river. I mean, we were cooking. Oh, this was a good idea. It seemed like the wrath of whatever angry god was watching us had been sated, for now at least, because we ran into no trouble. No enemies attacked us, I could use the wind to keep making progress and the batteries ran dry, I totally didn't take a wrong turn and get the boat stuck under a bridge for like 10 minutes, and before I knew it, we were sailing up to the shores of the riverbank. Leg 2 was officially complete. Alright Kevin, we have completed the second leg of our journey. Now it is time for the third, and quite possibly, the most difficult. After a very short-lived attempt to turn my cool sailboat into a sail car that nearly rolled back into the river, I settled on this truck design, complete with three batteries on the back, headlights on the front that did absolutely nothing, and some sails stored on the top for the final voyage into the sea at our journey's end. I also decided to leave the front completely open and unprotected for some reason, but that would be totally fine, right? Right? Okay. We've got everything on. Kevin, buckle up because now we're going on a road trip. To my pleasant surprise, these batteries actually lasted a really long time, so I didn't have to deal with the constant stopping and starting that my previous buggy dealt with, which made this leg a lot easier than I thought. All right. Oh, you can actually see how much juice is in the batteries in the back. Oh, I never noticed that. All right, I'm just following this road. We are headed vaguely in the direction of the green one. I could grab one of the towers, but I mean, come on, we gotta finish it in the dark. Since I no longer had a map to follow, I had to get out at every signpost, following every one that pointed me towards Akala. Everything was going great. At some point though, I made the worst mistake imaginable. Every road trip's worst nightmare. I took a wrong turn, and the results were disastrous. Alright, we got ourselves a little bit of a ghost town here. Um. Ew, we're going, we're going, we're going. Oh my god, they got out of the way. They got out of the way. I'm taking a few out. Okay, that didn't do as much as I thought. We're running, we're running. Oh my god. Luckily, my car was fast enough that the Bacoblins couldn't keep up, but it seemed that my troubles were not over yet. Yeah, no. These guys. Also. Where's the road? This, uh... Okay, so, so this was not the correct way to go at all. <clears throat> oh, I don't have protection on the front, do I? Oh. And we're gonna have to go past. <clears throat> oh, we're gonna have to go past these other guys again. Where did I miss a turn? Okay, we got, 
come on. Oh my god, there's so many, dude. Oh! I am slaughtering dudes. I'm in first person somehow. I don't know what happened. God has once again entered the fray. What is going on, dude? I don't know how to fix this camera thing. And I don't want to stop driving. Okay, okay. I'm going to step out. <laughs> oh no, we lost a... I think we lost a sail. That's annoying. Despite everything, the dead end, the bacoblins, the construct, God's attempt to stop me and Kevin the same way he took out the dinosaurs, somehow we survived. And it was at this moment that I knew if we could survive that, we could survive anything. And so, after taking the correct exit this time, and down to our last battery, it was time for the home stretch. I made a couple of stops along the way, but it was basically a straight shot to Akala now. We were so close. Okay. This is interesting. Oh, is there another sail for me to replace? From when God threw a rock at me and destroyed my other one? And so, Kevin and I drove up the mountain roads and through the autumnal forest. We talked, we joked, we cried, we shared our hopes and dreams. We even discovered a new method for hunting. You know, there's drumsticks in here. By this point, after everything we'd endured together, we were more than friends. We were brothers. The thought that someone would lay so much as a finger on such a wonderful creature, let alone crucify them, you monsters! But speaking of monsters, our journey was not at an end just yet. I think we probably do have to go across the bridge. Alright. You know what? I'm actually gonna not be stupid about this. Between us and our journey's end laid a bridge teeming with monsters. But at this point, a couple of bacoblins wasn't enough to scare me. I put an actual windshield on the front of my truck, something I probably should have done a while ago, and went barreling in. Okay, we are fully boxed in. Don't come inside, camera. Reverse. All right. I really need this battery to not die. Are they attacking someone already? Or are they dancing? I don't know. We're going in. We're going. Oh, oh, oh. They're too slow. Oh, it's a monster fortress. Oh, this is not good. I'm driving. I'm driving. I'm coming. I'm going. Oh, I don't. That doesn't look like a road. That looks like a side area. Okay. Are there a bunch of dudes tailing me? No, no, we're good. Oh, don't turn around when driving. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh, that was not that bad. And past this bridge lay the open expanse of Akala. The finish line was in sight. Okay, this looks like smooth sailing up ahead. This looks pretty wide open. No bottlenecks where a bunch of guys can run out at me and I have to run them all over and kill like 10 dudes. It seemed at this point like nothing could possibly stand in the way of our destination. The questions that had plagued me at the beginning of this quest were long gone. I knew that I could bring Kevin all the way to the edge of the map. Instead, I found myself wondering what would happen when we got there. Kevin and I had grown so close through all the trials we had endured, it seemed at the time like our journey would go on forever. It hadn't sunk in what would happen at the end. My plan was to send Kevin off beyond the horizon, beyond the edge of the map, a place where I couldn't follow. The place he truly wanted to go. I assume. I mean, I mean, he never explicitly said that he wanted to go here, but he never objected to it, so uh, there were times when I would have given anything to be brought instantly to the end of this journey, but now that I was almost there, I couldn't help but wonder if I was ready to say goodbye. 
As we drove across the fields of Akala, I was secretly hoping that we'd run into something, anything, to extend our journey just a bit longer. But we found none. There were no bokoblins prowling the field. These pirates in the bay were too far away to bother us. It seemed that even God had gone silent. Despite my wishes, there was nothing left to stop us. And before I knew it, we had arrived. But no, it looks like we're in the clear. <gasps> Is this, who's that guy? Who's that guy? It's just a guy? We're gonna, okay. Why is this rumbling? Uh, okay, okay. We're just gonna drive away. We're just gonna get out. Nope. This is the final boss right here. Yes! Also, that stone talus that we're not gonna mention. All right. All we need to do is send Kevin off into the ocean over there. And our journey will be complete. I'm going to just load this stuff up just because I'm that lazy. All right. We are going to build, Kevin, the grandest ship you have ever seen in your life. All right. And we've made it. Out beyond that horizon is Kevin's friend. Mark my words. Kevin, we've done it. We are so, oh so close. Your friend, Kevin, your friend is right out there. He's right out there. All right, let's build Kevin, not a boat. We're not building Kevin a boat. We're building him a ship. He's earned it. All right, let's get ourselves like a full on mast up in here. Despite what I was feeling at this moment, I knew what I had to do. I would build Kevin a ship fit for a king, a magnificent triple sailed vessel that would carry him out to sea where he could finally be reunited with his friend. A friend, it seemed, that was not me. Kevin, it has truly been an honor to come this far with you. You need to reach your friend, and pretty soon you will. Right out there is where your friend is. The memories I've spent uh, I made, I can't even. And in this moment, my greatest fear became true. I wasn't ready to say goodbye. I wasn't ready for the journey to end. But deep down, I knew if I waited until I was ready, Kevin would never reach the promised land. And so there was nothing left to do. All the memories that we've made together that time that I flew a plane into the ground uh, with you on the bottom of it. That time that we tried to fly up a waterfall and it didn't work. That time that we drove through that canyon with all those dudes in it and mowed down like 20 guys. Try as I might, I can never forget you. But it is about time to put you on your boat and send you on your way. And so I placed Kevin upon his ship and carried him out to sea. The moment had finally come. There was no sense in delaying it any further. It wouldn't get any easier. With one arrow, Kevin would be sent into the great beyond. Kevin, Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. God speed. The internet just loves to crucify, let alone crucify them? You monster! Mark my words, Kevin will not be crucified on this day.